Hey guys, sometimes it's hard to figure out the will of God, and sometimes it's right in front of our faces. Uh, First Thess- Thessalonians uh, chapter uh, 5, yeah, I'm sorry, 5 verses 16 and 17. <clears throat> Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. How do we rejoice always? And how do we give thanks in all circumstances? Well, if we know the truth, Romans 8, 28, if we know this truth, we know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. We know that in everything God works for good. Some translation says in all things, all things work together for good. So every circumstance in your life. So even if it's something bad, thank God. Try and think about why God would allow it. And maybe you could figure it out. Like, uh, you know, I told you the story one time. I was listening to Christian music, praising the Lord, and I missed my exit. And I was kind of aggravated about it. And then I realized there was an accident off of the exit. So I praise the Lord that I missed the exit because I might have been involved in that accident. So, but luckily I, I had to make a U-turn so I seen the accident. But there, there may be times that we've been protected and we don't even know it. And we complained about it. <laughs> but just the other night something funny happened to me. Um, when I was a kid, I put things together pretty quickly. And I put together there were certain foods that would make this greasy Italian kid break out in pimples. And a lot of people would say chocolate, but chocolate never did that. But what I found was greasy, salty food. That combination of grease and salt would make me break out. So although I love chips, I would avoid them (laughs) for vanity's sake. And um, so most of my life, I avoid potato chips. But I'm 56 years old now. The other night, my wife were watching a a movie. It was actually pretty cool. It was uh, Clint Eats with, with Son. I didn't even know he had a son who was an actor. Uh, he's actually uh, kind of reminded me of Clint, one of my favorites. Uh, he really took after his father. But anyway, getting to the point, my wife was eating some chips and dip. So I'm like, yeah, I'm 56. Let me indulge in some chips. And man, the next day I had a big old white head on the side of my nose. I was like, what the heck? I can't even eat chips. But I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm the kind of guy, if I like something, I'm going to eat that whole bag. And I might, if there's a bag in the house every night, I might eat a whole bag every night. And um, I'm like, thank you, God, for protecting me. Because you know what? At at our age, eating greasy, salty food is not only going to make you break out in pimples, but it's going to give you a heart attack. <laughs> it's going to it's gonna clog up your arteries. It's like the worst thing. You know, the salt shrinks the arteries and the, and the oil, you know, paces them up. So it's like the worst thing for you is salty chippy food but if i didn't see the zits i'd be like pushing aside oh, a little bit ain't gonna hurt me oh a little bit ain't gonna hurt me you know like the frog in the water so i thank god for pimples that i have a very healthy heart you know um my knees are bad <laughs> but my heart's good <laughs> praise the lord and you might say rob you know okay i get it but you know what if it's something really bad you know pimples are pimples you know everybody gets pimples but what if it's something really bad like Okay, what's the worst thing that could happen to us as Christians? What's the one thing that we would really, would really be terrifying? How about being oppressed by demons? <laughs> not possessed. You know, we have the Holy Spirit, so uh, the demons can't possess us. I do not believe I have to ask Father Vincent Lampart when I get him back on, the exorcist priest. But I'm pretty sure they can't possess us because we have the Holy Spirit in us. But they can oppress us. And uh, that's exactly what happened to St. Paul. And let's see how he dealt with it. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. And to keep me from being too elated, some versions say conceited, by the abundance of revelation. So St. Paul was, you know, God was giving him revelations, giving him wisdom. Uh, He was a leader in the church. So God wanted to keep him from getting too conceited. You know, that can happen to us men. A thorn was given me in the flesh. What was this thorn, St. Paul? Was a messenger of Satan to harass me, 
to keep me from being too elated or too conceited. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. I will all the more gladly boast of my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities. For when I am weak, I am strong. Show me a Christian man or woman who's never had any hardships or calamities or weaknesses. And I will show you a weak Christian. Show me a Christian who suffered insults and hardships, persecutions and calamities. And I will show you a strong Christian. Because when we are weak, he is strong in us. So no matter what we're going through, we give thanks to Jesus. Because we know all things work together for good for those who love us. We may not see it. We may not even see it on this planet. But when we get to heaven and see the big picture, we'll see that our suffering touched someone maybe or protected us from doing something really stupid and losing our faith. And as Catholic Christians, we have, we have so many gifts. You know, I was an evangelical for 30 years, you know. And, you know, I had the grace of baptism. We were baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the baptism was valid. And I had the Holy Scriptures that can transform your mind when you read it. And unlike a lot of, you know, a lot of Protestants, that's all they got. But I was fortunate and was a charismatic Pentecostal. So I received some gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I had that. But as Catholic Christians, we have all that. <laughs> But in addition to that, we have the grace we receive from the Holy Eucharist. We can eat the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We, we don't just sing about being covered by the blood of Jesus. We drink the blood of Jesus and receive powerful grace. And we can do that every day. No matter what you're going through, there's always something. We can go and commune. We can have communion with all the saints in heaven and ask them to pray for us. We can have communion with the angels in heaven and ask them to pray for us. There's so much available to us as a Catholic Christian. So much. So much. And my Protestant Christians will say, well, I go right to the Father. I don't need to go through all that. Yeah, we go right to the Father too. <laughs> through the Son. But Jesus has given us a family. And he's given us a mother. His own mother. That we can ask to pray for us. Jesus, you know in the scriptures it tells you, whether you're Protestant or Catholic, you know the scripture commands us to pray for one another. And we can ask for others' prayers. But as Catholic Christians, we know that we have eternal life if we believe in Jesus. So we don't see a division between heaven and earth. We're one church. One church. As a Catholic Christian, we can go to our brothers and sisters in heaven and ask them to pray for us. You know, as Catholic Christians, the one big difference a lot of Christians don't realize is Protestantism and, and most Protestants even know, know this theology, like, you know, the theology of it. They just kind of know it, but they, they don't know the theology of it. It's it's called, their justification is called forensic justification. It's a legal term. It's a legal justification. The way Martin Luther taught it was, when Jesus looks at us, he sees our sin, and we're just one big pile of horse manure. But once we believe in Jesus, he covers us with a white sheet. We're still horse manure, but when the Father looks at us, he sees that white sheet. So because of what Jesus did for us, we're legally innocent. And, and the Catholic Church believes we're legally, when, when we believe in Christ, we have that legal justification. But we know through the centuries, through, from, from the first century, through the scriptures, it's clear there's more to that. When we have faith in Christ, when we have faith in Christ, he starts changing us. And then when we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He wipes us away of all our original sin. Every sin that we did, uh, we did up to that point. He transforms us. So we are no longer a pile of manure. We're white as snow. We're transformed. We, be, we abide in Christ. We become a new creation in Christ. It says when we're baptized, the old 
passes away, behold, all things are new. So we have a new spirit, a new soul, cleansed. Our Protestants think they go through their whole life horse manure, but holding this sheet so they're not feeling the wrath of God. And they think it's a one-time thing. We're Catholics, we know it's a process. And there'll be times when we'll commit a mortal sin and we'll get that stain back on us. But we have the grace of reconciliation we can go to. And we can be cleansed again. Because sin can't enter heaven. Even with this white sheet covering you, we're changed, we're transformed. We have a renewing of the mind. We're born again. Our spirit is alive and our souls are cleansed. Being a Catholic Christian means you're abiding in Christ and he's abiding in you. So no matter how hard things get, we could be like the first century Christians who would not bow a knee to the Roman emperor. Instead, they would get thrown to the lions and be crushed and sing hymns and praises to God. And the blood of the martyrs were the seeds of the church. And this is how the church grew in the first century. And you know, when I was a Christian, I always wanted to get back to how they were in the first century. I wanted to be like that first century church. And then when I found out that first century church didn't believe like I believed, they never heard a solo scripture because they didn't have Bibles to walk around with. If they wanted to hear the Bible, they had to go to Mass and hear the Bible read. Letters that weren't even put together. The church didn't even decide, didn't even decide what should be in the Bible, the 382 AD at the Council of Rome. But those first, second, and third century Christians were strong because they had the Eucharist. They ate the flesh of Christ and drank his blood. They asked for the prayers of the saints. They were Catholic. <laughs> the strongest Christians that ever walked the planet were Catholics. And they gave thanks to God as they were being torn apart by lions. Think about that. We have the same grace available to us. So thank God for pimples and stay Catholic.